down here off the coast of Louisiana, sitting on top of an oil rig in order to celebrate the North American oil and gas renaissance. And when you think oil and gas, you should think Halliburton, the second largest oil service player on Earth with major exposure to North America. That's why we were thrilled when we got a chance to talk with Jim Brown, president of Halliburton's Western Hemisphere Operations. Take a look. Jim, it's been three years since we saw each other last. Tell me how your technology has advanced, what you can do now that you couldn't do that. Well, I tell you what, it, it, it's very similar to what happened on land, Jim. If you look at, at, at really the change in the reserve base, how we went from peak oil a few years ago to now a growing reserve base, that same thing is, is happening on land with the unconventionals is happening right here in, in the uh, Gulf of Mexico, both with the evolution of the deep water plays as well as getting more oil out of the uh, ground on the mature place. I know that one of the things that Halliburton does with the Hal Advantage is be able to get higher production for a lower cost per barrel. How are you able to do that and can you do it with the mature field? Well, sure you can. You know, if, if, if you look at uh, where Halliburton fits into the oil and gas de development realm, uh, we touch every aspect of drilling, evaluating, uh, completing, and ultimately producing the well. So uh, take deep water, for instance. Okay. You, you've, got a, you've got a well that's going to cost about $130 million. You equate that to a minute rate, it's 900000 a minute. So every bit of technology you can bring to play that can reduce that non-productive time is going to make that play more economically viable. Now, is it people or machines? What enables that? Because I see from what I, when, since I talked to you last, this cipher program you have. It seems almost like cloud, social, mobile. It's like all the things that you think about with technology in Silicon Valley right out here on a rig. It really is. It's, it's taking the whole optimization process, not only the surface delivery piece, of, of the uh, oil and gas industry, but the subsurface piece in terms of how we lower that uh, BOE, that unit cost right. of production. Now, Exxon, great customer, everyone knows, 50-year plan. They did. They decide these fields were pretty much, for them, not a needle mover anymore. With your technology, would these be fields that you would never want to let go? Well, of course not. I mean, if you look at the three primary strategies of Halliburton on a global basis, it's around unconventionals, and you were right. in the Bakken. Yeah, and you are doing a fabulous job uh, there. Uh, up close. Here in the Gulf of Mexico, it's about deep water, which is our second tenant, and third mature fields. And you got two of those components right here. So, so what is the technology that's changed the reserve landscape? What is it? It's really the 3D seismic and the 4D seismic, where you can, you can get a visual picture and reduce your, your exploratory risk. Secondly, it's the accurate uh, directional drilling, horizontal drilling process that has taken place today. And then finally, it's, it's the efficiency around multi-stage uh, completions. Same thing you saw in the Bakken is happening right here in, in, in the Gulf of Mexico. Right, so just make it clear to our viewers, instead of just going vertical down, you also do that same thing you were doing in the Bakken, go left, go right. Yeah, a lot, lot of directional drilling right. that, that gets you around the salt domes and a lot of horizontal drilling. Look at the deep water. You're, you're in five to 10,000 feet of water when you think about this technology, and then your subsurface, another 20,000 feet that you're geo-steering to the formation, and then uh, the multi-stage completions that, that, again, lower that, that cost to the operator and, and expose more pay to, to the pipe. Okay, one of the reasons I've liked Halliburton stock so much, not just because of the buyback, which is probably the best in the industry, but you have gone on record as saying that you are building, you have wells that you're doing 20, 40, even 60% better than wells that are right next door. How is that possible? Well, our model has always been this. If we can have the most efficient surface operation, we can make better wells, they're going to come to Halliburton. And if you go across the unconventional plays right now in mm -hmm. North America, you'll find that, that the wells that we've been involved with are 20, 30, 40% better. So even though there may be a cost to that, to that completion or that, that drilling process, if you make more oil, make more gas, you've actually lowered that cost per BOE. And that's what, that's what we strive for. Well, a lot of the majors have been saying it's gotten too costly to drill. Is that because they're talking about geographically? Because when I look at how much it costs versus when I saw you last, it's gone down. It has, and, and if, if we bring it home here to the Gulf of Mexico, obviously when you look at the lower tertiary and, and the, uh, the uh, deep Miocene, these are very expensive wells. Yes. So the reserves are there. The reserves are there. So then it comes down to rig efficiency. It comes down to completion efficiency where you get the cost down. And again, lower that cost per BOE. But this is a very resilient, resourceful, creative industry. And we always find a way to do it. Let's talk about the industry. Because when I saw you last, you just looked in the camera, didn't prompt you, and just said you needed 11,000 more people. 
How did that go? That was in 2011. We actually hired globally that year, Jim, uh, 18,000. So here in the Gulf of Mexico, we employ 3,000. Um, that, that, that's a payroll of $300 million. Those, those are highly skilled individuals, right. highly paid. And um, we'll probably hire another four to 500 in 2014. So this market has been a steadfast market for us since the 40s. But actually, over the next couple of years, it's a growth market for us. Now, uh, I hear two things when I listen to your presentations. I hear frack of the future and battle red. These initiatives were, well, frack of the future may have been when I saw you last, because you had me drink that McFlurry-like concoction. And you're, still, and you're still alive. <laughs> Doing better than ever. But you look how, good. <laughs> thank you. You're well, what's battle red done? Well, battle red is really bringing the future, digitizing our back office. You know, we employ... Uh, in, in North America, for example, 31,000 individuals. There's timekeeping associated with that. There's the dispatching of all those people. So di digitizing our back office from timekeeping to how we dispatch to uh, all of our, our real-time inventory, we, we obviously handle a lot of product. Right. So it's, it's really digitizing the oil patch today. Okay, now, uh, given the fact that you're president of the Western Hemisphere, a name that I title that we you all like covet. That name, yes, we all covet that title. <laughs> Brazil and Mexico. These are two very important markets, but they're not like dealing with the United States. Can a company like Halliburton have a stay there, even though the earnings aren't necessarily coming out there immediately? Uh, they are, but the reserves are there again. And, and this industry, again, is resourceful and creative, and, and the costs will come down. So you look at Brazil, where Obviously, when you look at the pre-salt, uh, those are big, big wells, yeah. but there's, there's an associated cost with it. But over time, as we've demonstrated in all the plays around the world, we get those costs down and, and make those things economically viable. Mexico, with their transition uh, of government now and, and understanding they need outside investment, there's going to actually, actually be a more reliability on, on the integrated service company to bring that technology. So although there's a little lull in those markets today, we know that, that long term they're going to be very strong, even at the end of 2014. All right, one last question. Is there yeah. uh, only 10 states right now really producing oil in, in the United States? Are there many more using your technology we just don't know about? Uh, many more. M more places to drill than we already have. Oh, yeah, there are. I mean, uh, there's obviously a lot of uh, public land in the U.S. Right. There's a lot of old basins that, that you, know, you, you need to pull out the old logs and dust them off and look at horizontal applications. To say, is there another Bakken or another, uh, uh, you know, uh, Eagleford, another Niber, uh, Eagleford, uh, there's pockets of them out there. And um, I think that you'll see some more come to play in the next couple of years. Well, Jim, thank you so much for your time. Thank Halliburton for your time. That's Jim Brown. He's president of Western Hemisphere for Halliburton.